In part one, we discussed why you may want to create a custom TADM database view to simplify your TADM report queries. In this part of the demo, we will work through an example report requirement to show how you collate the information you will need from the CDM to put together your custom view. Before we do this though, it's useful to understand the high level process we will use to create our custom view. IBM have provided two scripts in dollar collation home slash bin which allow TADM administrators to create bespoke views within the TADM database. Userviews.sh is available for Linux and Unix TADM environments and Userviews.bat is available for Windows TADM environments. TADM administrators firstly use the CDM to identify the classes, attributes and join information of the data they wish to extract. This information then needs to be added in a specific format into dollar collation home slash bin slash userviews.xml. The userview script then automatically creates the required database view using the attribute and class information defined in your userviews.xml file. The resulting view is created by combining existing building block views. It's good practice to ensure you name your custom views with a cm underscore prefix. This clearly separates your custom views from the IBM provided detail panel and building block views and avoids the possibility of your custom views being overwritten or modified in future TADM upgrades. There are three basic steps required when creating a custom view. Step one, identify the class attribute and relationship information from the CDM. Step 2. Identify the class join criteria and create your userviews.xml file. Step 3. Run the userview script. You will need to supply two switches to the script. The first switch you will need to supply is scripts. This builds a, an SQL command file. The second switch you will need to supply is recreate. This actually creates the database view. OK, let's look at our example scenario. The database team require a TADM report listing the following information on each Microsoft SQL Server discovered via TADM. They want the fully qualified host name, they want the IP address, the MAC address, the number of CPUs, the CPU type and speed, the RAM size of the SQL Server, the OS version and service pack number, the SQL Server version installed on the server and all installed database names and their primary data file location. As we discussed earlier in part one of this demo, these attributes are held across eight different building block views. OK, the first step in the process is to use the CDM to determine each required attribute name and each attribute's parent CDM class name. OK, the first thing we're going to do here is to launch the CDM website provided with the default TADM install. I'm going to drill into the Computer System class as this is generally a good place to start as most reports will contain attribute data from this key class. I'm going to drill into the Computer System object within the diagram so I can get a full listing of all the attributes associated with this class. At the top of the page we can see the derivation hierarchy this is one of the things we'll need to make a note of as we'll be using it in our userviews.xml file. As you can see, the class name is sys forward slash computer system. The Java class name we will need to use in our XML file must start from the root CDM class com.collation.platform.model.topology. Therefore, we will need to prefix all our class names with this address in our XML file. We will also need to replace the forward slash with a full stop. Therefore, the full class name we will need to use in our XML file for this particular class will be com.collation.platform.model.topology.sys.computersystem. OK, next we need to identify which attributes in this class we're going to need in our custom view. So let's scroll down our attribute list. The key thing to understand here is that attributes that have a relationship listed in parentheses next to their name are called implicit attributes. These attributes are not held directly in the class itself. They are instead derived from the declared relationship with its parent class. The parent class of an implicit attribute is denoted in the data type column. For example, the file systems attribute 
has a contained relationship to its parent file system class. The IP interfaces attribute has a contained relationship with its parent IP interface class. First of all, let's identify the local attributes we'll need from the computer system class. I'll then show you how we obtain implicit attributes from our other classes. So within our computer system class, we're going to need FQDN. I'm making a note here of the attribute name. You'll also see when you click on the attribute, a basic description of what the attribute is. So in this case, we've, we know that FQDN is the fully qualified host name of the computer system. So we know we've got the right attribute here. We need CPU type, CPU speed, and memory size. As you can see, I'm making a note of the attribute name and parent class name associated with each attribute, as we will need this in our XML file later. OK, we have now identified the local attributes in the computer system class we're going to need in our custom view. There's also a couple of implicit attributes listed here, which we're also going to add into our custom view. The first one is IP interfaces. If you remember, one of the attributes we need to display in our custom view is the IP address of the SQL servers. So let's have a look at the IP interface parent class to see if we can get the CDM attribute name and correct parent class name for this implicit attribute. We've now drilled into the IP interface parent class and we can see by looking at the attribute list that the IP address attribute is also an implicit attribute within this parent class. Implicit attributes are used to handle many-to-many -many relationships. For example, servers may have more than one NIC, an IP address associated with them. Therefore, the CDM needs to be able to model these relationships. So let's drill down into the IP address parent class to see if we can get the correct attribute name. By looking at the attributes listed here and the summary information, we'll be able to see that dot notation is the correct attribute name we will need to use to display the IP address of our SQL servers. The thing to bear in mind here is that we have drilled down two levels of parent class to get to this attribute from the computer system class. We will therefore need to make a note of the attribute name and the class name associated with this attribute for use in our XML file. The two other implicit attributes we're going to need within the computer system class are MAC address and OS version. So using the same methodology as before, we'll navigate to the parent class of each attribute and identify the correct attribute name and parent class. So for MAC address, we will drill into the L2 interface parent class and have a look at the HW address attribute. As you can see in the description, this is the correct attribute to use to pull back the MAC address for our SQL servers. So as before, we'll make a note of the attribute name and the class name associated with this attribute. And finally, if we look at the OS running attribute parent class operating system, and we have a look at the attribute list there, we'll see in the list there's an OS name attribute which will give us the operating system name and service pack for our SQL servers. So again we'll make a note of the attribute name and the class name associated with this attribute. After using this approach to identify the CDM attribute name and its associated CDM class name, you can see we've been able to identify a number of the attributes we will need in our custom view. These are either directly related to the computer system class or implicitly related. We will now need to identify the remaining database related attributes. OK, let's go back to our CDM overview web page. We can see here you get a good high-level breakdown of the key sections of the CDM. 
We're obviously interested in obtaining database attribute information, so drilling into the database section is going to be a good place to start. Let's drill into the database server class to get a full listing of the attributes associated with this class. One of the attributes we need in our custom view is the version of the SQL Server database. Product version information is a generic attribute common to all database types. Therefore, it's reasonable to assume that this attribute will be held in this generic database parent class. Let's have a look down the attribute list to see if we can see a suitable attribute name. And here we can see product version and looking at the description this does tell us this is the correct attribute to use to get a, a version of our SQL Server database. As we've done before we need to make a note of the attribute name and the class name for our XML file. The next two attributes we will need to find are specific to a Microsoft SQL Server database. The SQL Server database name and primary data file. You'll notice within our database server class we have listed at the top of the page direct subclasses to this class. One of these being SQL Server. That sounds like a good bet for containing SQL Server information so let's drill into this class. We can see here in the attribute list that the database attribute is an implicit class. Therefore let's drill into the SQL Server database parent class to see if we can get some more information. Within this class we can see two attributes we require for our custom view. Name, the name of the database and primary data file primary data file for the SQL Server database. As before we need to make a note of the attribute names and the class name for our XML file. We have now identified all the attribute names we will need in our custom view, together with their associated class names. This completes the first step in the process.